I pursued mechanical engineering uh, in my undergrad. I graduated from Vishweshwarya Technological University in Karnataka. And after grad, I graduated in 2015. And after graduating, I worked for Robert Bosch Diesel Systems as a production engineer. And finally, I decided to uh, go to University of Texas at Austin for a Master of Science in Energy and Earth Resources. Uh, it is uh, a multidisciplinary program wherein I uh, got to take classes in geosciences, engineering, uh, business school, law school, public policy school, and in economics. And uh, and then I uh, culminated that multidisciplinary studies through a thesis in energy economics and policy. And after that, uh, right now I am working as a sustainability analyst at Stanford University. That interest came in when I was in high school, uh, and uh, when I was my I was in my engineering, I uh, took up electives which were in energy, uh, like renewable energy technologies, uh, power plant engineering, and uh, IC engines. And I did a research seminar on uh, uh, recovering shale gas uh, from uh, uh, shale reserves. You are using horizontal drilling and uh, hydraulic fracturing, so which is focused on oil and gas. Uh, and with that perspective in mind, I decided to enter into energy programs. Uh, and at that time, energy transition had started and sustainability was a big topic. Uh, and uh, the other goal I had was to uh, provide uh, electricity and water uh, to about 4 billion people still don't have access to it. So I thought these two goals could go together. Uh, I was applying, I was, I had not finalized on the country. I was specifically focusing on the program uh, and that was the first priority. Second was university and third was the country. Uh, and I had admissions from KTH, Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden, TU Berlin, TU Munich, TU Delft, uh, all top universities in Europe. Uh, and uh, in the US, I had applied only to four universities of which I got admitted to three. So uh, the priority was based on the program. And uh, if I had not gotten admitted to this particular program in the US, while the others were typical engineering programs, I would have rather probably gone to Europe, uh, Sweden or to Netherlands. So the reasoning was the program, the uniqueness of this program. the application and adapting of uh, latest renewable energy technologies and policies. Europe is much more uh, uh, progressive as compared to US because US has a huge conservative uh, thinking population because of which a lot of policies don't get passed so fast. Uh, so Europe is doing great in terms of uh, renewable energy technologies. Uh, but uh, the reason why I like uh, US also is because Texas is the energy hub of the world and Houston is considered to be the energy capital of the world. How Silicon Valley, the Bay Area is for IT, Houston is for energy. And I got to study in Texas, uh, so had uh, uh, access to a lot of uh, resources and uh, people from the industry. Uh, and there are a lot of universities which are focused on energy in the US, so that's a good part and a lot of companies as well. For any other engineering program, you need to have an engineering undergrad degree. Uh, but this program accepts people from multiple backgrounds, people from uh, any background which you can some anyhow relate to energy and sustainability can apply to this program. Uh, but only people with a STEM degree can apply for a Master of Science degree. The others get a Master of Arts degree in this program. And one factor which is probably different from other engineering programs is that these people look at a multidisciplinary background and leadership experience and uh, potential for leadership. I think the course fees would be around $45,000 for 30 credits. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, but I think it's around that figure. Uh, and with that, the living expenses. Um, 
so which would make the entire expense to be about eighty thousand dollars i think for two years and uh, so how i funded was i first got a scholarship from the tata trust uh, a scholarship called jn tata scholarship um, so it's a process uh, you apply and you give an interview and if you're selected you get the scholarship it is about uh, 10 to 15 thousand uh, dollars it varies between that it is awarded anywhere between this and that uh, and then i had i did uh, an internship for the texas environment agency for nine months part-time so that helped me quite a bit and i was a graduate research assistant at a uh, at the bureau of economic geology uh, of the university uh, which is also the state uh, geological survey for texas uh, and I worked under an energy economist and I got funded for one semester. Uh, and the rest, I, uh, I arranged for an education loan uh, from a bank in India. This is a multidisciplinary course. There are N number of paths that one can choose. Uh, so uh, one thing which I would definitely like to highlight about this program is that somebody who wants to do this program needs to have a clear idea of their immediate goals after graduation and their long-term goals. Uh, without that, it is very difficult to structure uh, your master's degree because you have to choose your own subjects from a multiple uh, set of options because you take classes from five or six different schools, right? Instead of just one school or one department. So you have many options and you can get lost in it. So you should have a clear idea of what you want to do and what you want to achieve. Um, and having said that, uh, people choose different paths for themselves. So uh, I think uh, I think I've made a list of uh, general uh, positions people get into after graduating. Uh, you could be an energy marketing, energy markets analyst. Uh, you can get into economics and policy analysis in a think tank. Uh, you can be a geoscientist or an uh, engineer uh, for an energy company. You could be a sustainability analyst like I am right now. You can be a valuation uh, or project finance person in banks, uh, in their energy uh, departments, uh, in investment firms. Uh, and you can get into non-profit sector. So a lot of people, uh, after graduating, they get into companies like McKinsey, Wood McKinsey, IHS Market, EDP Renewables, the World Bank, uh, Asia Development Bank, uh, EPA, that is the Environment Protection Agency of the US, and Tesla, British Petroleum, etc. I started only uh, two months back at Stanford. Uh, so I work as a sustainability analyst. And my role is to uh, be a data analyst and a visualization person for sustainability data in order to help them make decisions uh, to reach the sustainability goals as set by the P Paris Climate Agreement. So Stanford has its own goals of achieving the COP, the Conference of Parties uh, Agreement goals. And to help them achieve that, there's a team uh, and I'm part of that team. I uh, I'm also there because I perform economic analysis, market analysis, and investment analysis. But right now I'm doing a lot of data visualization uh, with the sustainability data. Mm -hmm.